Hello fellow problem solvers, so today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2013 IMO, problem number 5. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of an hour, ideally 3 hours, but not more than 4 hours. If, on the other hand, you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you take 15 minutes, read the problem, and get your first ideas out on paper, play around with the problem. And now, let's begin! So, in summary, we have a functional equation which satisfies these two inequalities, inequality 1 and inequality 2, and there exists one number which is in the positive rational numbers, which satisfies f of that number is that number. And we need to prove that this functional equation maps every element onto itself. So the first idea I get here is let me plug in, in the first and second inequality, let me generalize them. So what I get is f of x to the power of n is greater than or equal to f of x to the n inside, and we get that f of x plus x plus x is greater than or equal to n times f of x, so f of nx is greater than or equal to n times f of x, where n is a natural number. However, these things don't give us anything right away, even plugging in a here doesn't give us that much, it gives us a to the power of n is greater than or equal to f of a to the n. I guess that's something new. Here, what we get is f of a times n is less than or equal to f of n a. This is a n, and this we do not know what this is. So now we need some new ideas, so let's go to them. So the first sort of new idea I get is in the first one, let's plug in x equals 1. And what we get is f of 1 times f of y is greater than or equal to f of y for all y. Now if we plug in y equals a, we get that f of 1 times a is greater than or equal to a, i.e. f of 1 is greater than or equal to 1. Now this is progress and it immediately implies that f of n is greater than or equal to n for all natural numbers n. Now, sometimes with rational numbers, it is easier to first focus on the integers and then move on to rational numbers. Here, the idea is let's first try to get f of n equaling n for all natural numbers then, and then let's move on to other rational numbers. Before we can really go ahead and do that, we would need to first prove that all the positive rational numbers map to positive rational numbers. And how we do that is by plugging in, say, some rational number x equals p over q and plug in y equals q in the equation 1, we get that f of p over q times f of q is greater than or equal to f of p. Now this is positive, this is positive, which means that this over here needs to be positive as well. So what that means is that f of x is strictly greater than zero for all x which are in the positive rational numbers. Now what this gives us by two is that the function f is strictly increasing. Now here the focus would be to try to prove that f of one is one. And after that we can go ahead and try to prove that f of n is n for all natural numbers n. So now I invite you to pause for 10 to 20 minutes and ask yourself what happens if f of 1 isn't equal to 1? In fact, what happens if f of 1 is strictly greater than 1? Now is the time to pause and here's the idea. So by the second equation, if we have this, it immediately implies that f of n is greater than or equal to n times f of 1. And we know this is greater than or equal to 1 and that's how we get the estimate that f of n is greater than or equal to n. However, this in turn implies if f of 1 is greater than 1, then let's put f of 1 to be equal to 1 plus some t1. Then the estimate up here turns into something different. It turns into f of n being greater than or equal to n plus n times t1. And now as we increase n, we can increase this to be bigger than any constant we please. Now this gives us a bigger lower bound on the f's of something. Now my question for you is, is there anything that gives us an upper bound on some f's? And the thing is there is, and that is that f of a to the power of n is less than or equal to f of a to the power of n, which we know to be 
a to the power of n. And now also take in mind, because f is strictly increasing, that we also have that f of a to the power of n is going to be greater than or equal to f of a to the power of n floored, and this is going to be greater than or equal to the floor of a to the power of n. But not only that, that's not really useful. What's useful is that f of a to the power of n is greater than or equal to some f of t, then what we know, if a to the power of n is going to be greater than some t, then the f of a to the power of n is going to be greater than f of t. But now look how this is rising for n if f of 1 is not equal to 1. Here with these sort of ideas, these crumbs, I invite you to pause for five minutes and try to put these ideas together. Here's how you put them together. So here's the idea. Let f of 1 be 1 plus t1. Then put a q which is substantially big. Then the f of q becomes greater than or equal to q times 1 plus q times t1, which is greater than q plus 100. Now if we apply the second equation to every single q and some natural number t, what we get is f of q plus t is greater than or equal to f of q plus f of t, and f of q is now greater than q plus 100, and f of t, we can just say it's greater than t. Now take two minutes to see if you can finish proving that f of 1 needs to be equal to 1. So now for all n greater than q, we have f of n is greater than n plus 100. But also remember that f of a to the power of n is less than or equal to a to the power of n. And f of a to the power of n is going to be greater than or equal to f of a to the power of n, but floored. However, for a large enough little n, this becomes greater than a to the power of n becomes greater than q which means this becomes strictly greater than the floor of a to the n plus 100. Now this leads to a contradiction because we got that a to the n is greater than the floor of a to the n plus 100, which is false. And this contradiction leads us to the fact that f of 1 needs to be equal to 1. Now I invite you to take 5 to 10 minutes and try to prove that f of n is equal to n for all natural numbers n using these similar tactics. In fact, at this point, I would invite you to take 15 to 20 minutes and try to finish the problem all by yourself. So, here's the idea for all n. Assume that for some n, f of n is greater than n. Then let f of n be equal to n plus some constant c, where c is greater than zero. Now applying the second inequality here for n, we will get that f of n times m is greater than or equal to, this is n plus n plus n, m times, is greater than or equal to f of n times m. And now this is equal to n times m plus m times c. And now, take m greater than 100 over c, and what we get is that for that m, f of n times m will be greater than or equal to mn plus mc, which will be greater than mn plus 100. And now applying the second inequality to n times m plus some t, we get this greater than or equal to f of nm plus f of t, which is going to be greater than mn plus a hundred plus t. So now similarly as before, we get if the fact is true that f of n is greater than n, then there exists a big N such that for all m greater than n, we have f of m is going to be greater than m plus a hundred. But then taking a to the t to be greater than n, we get f of a to the t is less than or equal to a to the power of t greater than f of the floor of a to the t, which would by this be greater than the floor of a to the t plus a hundred. 
Now this is the same contradiction we had before, which implies that f of n must be equal to n. And now that we've proved this for all natural numbers n, I invite you to take five minutes and try to finish the problem all by yourself. Here's the solution. So given these equations and inequalities, take some rational number p over q, x equal to p over q, plug it in, and plug in y equals q in the first equation, and we get that f of p over q times q is greater than or equal to f of p over q times q, which is f of p, which is p, i.e. we get f of p over q is greater than or equal to p over q for all rational numbers. Now remembering that the second inequality generalizes to f of n times x is greater than or equal to n f of x for all natural numbers n, plugging in n equals q and x equals p over q, what we get is that f of q is greater than or equal to, my bad actually, f of p is greater than or equal to q times f of p over q, which implies that because f of p is p, we have p over q is greater than or equal to f of p over q. Now combining these two inequalities, that implies that f of p over q is p over q. And now this proves that for all positive rational numbers, we have f of x is equal to x. Now let's write this up in a clean and neat solution. So the first thing we say is we have these conditions and we say in one, plug in x equals a and y equals one, and we get that f of one is greater than or equal to one. Now for two, we have sort of inductively that n times f of x, where n is a natural number. Now from here, this immediately implies that f of n is greater than or equal to n for all natural numbers n. Now we also say from one, we know that f of x to the power of n is going to be greater than or equal to f of x to the power of n. And plugging in x equals a, we get a to the power of n is greater than or equal to f of a to the power of n. And now we say, assume that f of n is equal to n, and then we have that f of n is equal to n plus t for some constant t greater than zero. Now this, by our generalization here, implies that f of n times some k is going to be greater than or equal to k times f of n, which is going to be equal to kn plus tk. So for k greater than 20 over t, we have f of n times k is greater than or equal to n times k plus 20. And now, here k is a natural number, and now plugging in x equals n times k and y equals s, some natural number in two, we get that f of nk plus s is greater than nk plus s plus 20. So this means that for all q greater than some n, which is equal to nk, and q that's a natural number, we have that f of q is greater than q plus 20. However, now take a p such that a to the power of p is greater than n plus a hundred, and now we have a to the p is greater than or equal to f of a to the p is greater than or equal to f of the floor of a to the p, which is by this greater than the floor of a to the p plus a hundred. Now, this thing right here implies that a to the power of p is greater than the floor of a to the power of p plus a hundred, which is impossible because the floor of a to the p is greater than a to the p minus one or equal. So plus a hundred, we would get that zero is greater than 99, which is absurd, a contradiction. We know that this inequality here hold true because f is a strictly increasing function, which we know because from f of n greater than or equal to n, from one, we have that f of p over q times f of q is greater than or equal to f of p, which means 
all the rationals map to positives. So that means that this function is f is strictly increasing and that's how we know this whole thing. Now this here implies that f of n is equal to n for all natural numbers n. And here we finish up by saying from f of n equals n and from f of n times x is greater than or equal to n times f of x by repeatedly applying 2 and f of n times f of x is greater than or equal to f of n times x by 1, we get for x equals p over q and n equals q here that f of n times x is going to be f of p, which is p is greater than or equal to q times f of x. And here, what we get is that n, which is q times f of x, is going to be greater than or equal to n times x, which is p. And from these inequalities, it follows that f of x times q is p, i.e. f of p over q is equal to p over q. Now this proves our problem statement, and as always, and as always, thanks for problem solving.